ice in here. Oh. Hello. Hello, everyone. Hi, Bingbing. Hi, Bingman. Hi, Akash. Bingbing. Xinhe. Hi. Hello, everyone. I think uh, Luis is in a holiday this week, so he might not be able to join us today, right? Yes, yeah, he's he's on leave, so I'll be stepping in for him. And I think we have Susan joining today, too. Wow, welcome, Susan's back. I think Susan is in Australia, time zone. Yes. <laughs> Hi, Hello. Susan. Hi, Susan. Hello, can people hear me? Yes, we can hear yeah. you. Uh, we can't see you yet. Okay. There you go. Here it is. Oh. Good to Hello. see everybody. I'm just Good getting morning. started and reconnecting. <laughs> morning, Susan. Welcome back. Thank you. All right, let's wait a couple more minutes for others to show up. Hey, Susan, how are you? Hi, Tari. Yeah, I've been good, just busy with the move and still it's um, in progress, but starting to settle in into the new location. Nice to see you. Thank you. How's everything in Seattle? Are you feeling better? I saw you were sick. I'm, I'm better today. Still fighting some cold and runny nose, but better yeah. than yesterday. Getting you stronger. <laughs> yeah. And the weather here is very usual Seattle stuff. Warm it's one the day, best season. cold <laughs> the next day, and so you don't know how, how it's going to catch you. Yeah, I, I saw the weather in like end of May. It's like I spent 10 years there, and I've never had a nice weather on Memorial Day. Yeah. And I saw the weather forecast. I was like, how did I miss that? <laughs> you should come back. We'll take that into consideration. <laughs> okay. It's winter in Australia here, but it's surprisingly being like sunny every day. Like in, every day I wonder, like in the middle of the day, I'm like, how is this winter? It's so warm and sunny. Yeah, I never actually think that there is a winter in Australia. Yeah, it gets pretty cold in the morning. Um, but yeah, in the middle of the day, it's like the weather is so nice. Where are you? Are you in Sydney or somewhere else? I've yeah, seen. I'm in Sydney. Yeah, okay. Nice. Sorry, we are hijacking the meeting. 
I'll stop. Yeah, Akash, you're, you're driving today. Thanks for um, going along with these community meetings. Yes, yeah, no problem. Glad to have you back uh, holding down the fort. Definitely not doing as good of a job, but enough for passing, probably. <laughs> uh, I think so, reading the notes, I think you're doing a great job. <laughs> cool. So I think we have uh, we have quorum, um, so we can start. I added a few items, and thank you to whoever just added another one, Feynman. Uh, and then we can change up the order if people want to talk about some things for longer. But um, let's start with the open PRs, as usual. So we have uh, this week we have a new one. Uh, Bin Bin, you added this this new PR, uh, which is for the Ratify build. Did you want to spend a little bit of time talking about that? Yeah, sure. So the P this PI is trying to address the issue raised by Xinhe. Uh, so I think if we want to integrate with Azure or oh, AKV, so there should be uh, a, a different pipeline that just verifies the basic uh, image with the notation plugin without any like external plugins. But for now, our Docker file, we always build the uh, image with all external plugins. So I just want to uh, update Docker file so that we can choose which plugin we want to build. And can you go to the files? Yeah. yeah, so so the first one for the make file, I just split our best test into two different tests. One is for the best test, which covers all the test cases for the notary or, or for the Base test for the best in uh best, best image and it includes the notary test and also other like CRD test, TRS test, and for the other one is the plugin test, which covers all the test cases for different plugins. So basically the the new two files are just split by the first uh, from the first one. So they share the same test. And uh, yeah, if you scroll down, so for the Docker build command, because I add some arguments into the Docker file, so we can choose which plugin we want to build. Because for this one, for this target, it is used for our like normal test for all test cases. So we just set all of them as two. And uh, if we scroll down to the Docker file, we ha we have four new arguments now, with each one for a different plugin. And there is an if condition check for each one. So yeah, basically we uh, it it can build the base image without any external plugins, but it can also like build any external plugins if we want. Oh. And for the test beds, uh, it's more like just, I just move the basic test cases from this test bed to the base test and leave the uh, plugin test in in the plugin test dot bed. So there is no change to the base test, just like move some test from here to there. Got it. Yeah, that, that makes sense to me. So basically, by default, if you don't provide any build args, then we'll provide the slim ratify image with no external plugins, and then you can specify build args, which will, you can choose which ones you want. Yeah. Okay, makes sense. Uh, uh, Sinha, do you, it, does this satisfy the requirements that you're looking for? Yeah, so I think it, uh, it, should, uh, uh, it should work, yeah. Okay, great, cool. Uh, so I'll, are, are you still working on this bin bin or did you yeah. need a review from I, anyone or? Actually, so the cost and test was broken when I just moved it from the test of best from, from test of best to the best test. I think maybe something wrong with one test cases. 
so it might change the configuration. And so I need to figure out uh, which test made the change. Okay, got it. Okay. Okay, cool. Um, anyone else have any thoughts on this one? All right. Uh, all right, let's move on to the next one. Uh, so following up on the cache work, uh, still in review mode, uh, we had some more discussions with some of the gatekeeper team on how to align with their new pub sub model that they introduced, which uses Redis. So uh, still need to work some performance metrics and testing there. Apart from that, also there were some concerns on the um, security aspects of having the Redis cache being shared by multiple apps on the cluster. Uh, in particular, I think there's concern on if we were to store the registry uh, credentials, which are in the return from the auth provider inside the Redis cache, what would be the uh, security separation if another app also uses a uh, uses Redis? So. Uh, there's a few ideas floating around. One is to uh, basically not store any of those credentials inside the Redis cache, and then we would each each replica would have to deal with its own in-memory um, cache as it currently does. We'd have to see what the performance hit is for that. Uh, the if if it becomes necessary where that's not enough of a solution, we would need to implement some sort of encryption schema where we would encrypt the data put it in Redis and then decrypt. And that kind of makes things more complicated in terms of like managing the encryption keys and rotation of that. So uh, I think there's some, I will continue exploration in this and see what is feasible here. Um, but yeah, so hopefully I'll have some more updates next week. Um, we'll skip over this one. Uh, been, been any updates on this? Any blockers or review? No, uh, same no update on this. Yeah. Okay. Great. I think that's all we have for now. Okay. Um, I think Yi, you mentioned that you have to leave early. Did you want to, uh, any of these topics or any new ones that you wanted to talk about first? Uh, thanks. Uh, no. No specific topics I want to discuss. Okay. All right, so we can just go down the list. Uh, so this came from a discussion last week to see if we could get any feedback from some of the from the user stories and conferences that Ratify has been demoed at, um, KubeCon, and then recently the Build Conference. I think Joshua isn't here, but uh, Toddy, did you have anything to discuss in terms of of this or um of this particular issue or in general about um just in general some things that you would like to see prioritized based off of feedback you might have heard i had an interesting conversation with kiverno about how uh notary uh, can be used in such admission controllers i was just curious uh, now that we are implementing a hashicorp uh, plugin for notary, how easy it will be to add HashiCorp to ratify? Not the highest priority, but I'm just curious how much effort will be to add additional plugins for notary into the admission controller. How do you mean add a new uh, certificate store or new KMS in Ratify, uh, just like Hashcock Vault. Yep. <clears throat> I just forwarded an issue related to a request to add a new search store in Ratify for Hashcock Vault as notation is adding this new KMS. Yeah, I think we had discussion around this topic and uh, Bing Bing mentioned that we will need to implement and implement and the refactor the search store and uh, add a new plugin like Hashcock Vault to, to ratify and it requires additional uh, development. Yeah. And yeah. I think 
my my question is when we say plug in what exactly we are talking uh, at least from experience point of view let's say if i want to use uh, uh, here is how the development goes right so you have notary right the notary cli and notary cli you can develop a plugin for the notary cli that can be used to do the signing and the verification uh, for images or artifacts that are signed with notary now if we are asking that every kind of admission controller whether it's ratify kiverno whatever chain guard is doing that they go and re-implement the plugins for notary the adoption will not be kind of very high not everybody will want to do that so uh, i i discussed this today with uh, uh, jim from from kiverno and he was like yeah, we would like to go there, but we don't want to spend too much time for every new plugin that our customers want to go and actually do a custom implementation. And this is also not good for, for Ratify, right? Because ideally, as a Ratify user, I would like to go and pull the plugin from Notary website or whatever the Notary plugin is, is available from and just use it in Ratify. That's kind of the experience that we should be targeting if we are saying now for uh hashicore plugin we need to implement or spend at least a cycle in ratify to do the implementation for azure code signing we need to do a cycle to do the implementation for uh aws kms we need to do a cycle it's it doesn't sound very efficient let's put it that way Yeah, totally agree. And uh, in that issue, we also put the additional follow-up question or suggestion that we want. We also want to provide a plugin design when adding and managing any external plugins. And uh, at least we should have a flexible interface that others can contribute and develop the plugins for Ratify without modifying the Ratify core component or the core source code, but currently we need to modify the core source code. We we should think from experience, not only from Ratify, but also how notary plugins are implemented. So I don't I don't think it's only a Ratify. Ratify is consumer of no, of notary. And notary plugin architecture right now. So there is the benefit that I can develop the plugin in any language. Well, that's that's fine. But we need the, the notary side at least to have a guidance uh, how the plugins can be used in such uh, um, systems like uh, Ratify, Kiverno, and so on. Uh, Susan, I believe Feynman and me can share the link to the work about uh, uh, HashiCorp. Let me, I'll send the link, uh, but they may have more details where we are. Do you mean the notary HashiCorp plugin repo? Yeah, actually, we had the first two PRs, which are still in review. But uh, in notary plugin system, I think it is quite straightforward and easy that users just need to put the executable binary to the specified uh, folder in the file system. The notation will re recognize that uh, folder and uh, uh, initialize the external plugin like Hashcorp World plugin or AKB plugin, then users will be able to use that. And the notation list can also list the available plugins in their system. Users don't have um, too much additional work. They just need to follow the plugin spec to develop their plugin and uh, provide the ex executable binary for notation. The notation will recognize those plugins. Yeah, no, Tali also forward the Hashcorp vote plugin link. Thanks, Tali. 
Yeah, thank you, Fame and Toddy. I think what Toddy said makes um like that's a good point. Like we don't want to re-implement what the Nobre plugin already implemented. Like so long term, we want to look at um how can we make how can we reuse what's already implemented in Vatify? So um we'll take a look there. Sounds good. I think we'll follow up on that and then we could use that link, that issue that was created to put down some of our thoughts on that and maybe talk about it again next week. All right. Thanks, folks. Uh, Feynman, did you want to, I missed your added point. Did you want to talk about this Ratify interactive tutorial? I can give a quick walkthrough to these ratify uh, online interactive tutorial. Actually, we had a similar uh, tutorial for notation, which is developed by a community contributor. So we asked that guy to develop the, the same scenario for ratify. So I think the general pur purpose for this environment is to provide uh, an online uh, demo environment that newbies can uh, quickly test and install Ratify on uh, on Kubernetes in their browser. They don't need to provision any uh, infrastructure like Kubernetes, uh, Helm, and also some other dependencies in their machine. Maybe they are the first trier or just want to test the uh, you know the quick start listed on the readme. So um, I think. It requires users to sign with a, an available account. I can quickly uh, give a short demo uh, from my side. May I share my screen? I'm not sure I, I have access. Oh, I don't have sure. access to share. Yeah, let me make you host one second. Thanks. Since I have signed signed in to this uh, Killer Coda website, Killer Coda system, so it might be quite easy for me to demo it. Thanks. Now I can. I have access to share. Um, I have signed to this system. Actually, users can use uh, GitHub or uh, any email or any other uh, single sign access to sign to this platform. It's quite easy. I think the general goal is that, that users can test and try ratify in just maybe three or five minutes. Yeah, as you can see, um, this environment, this, this environment has already installed some dependencies for Ratify. So you don't need to spend some time to provision those like Helm, uh, Kubernetes, and also some load balance uh, service. And also it has a built-in uh, storage service like local pass provisioner. I think we can use local pass for the uh, CSI and uh, Kubernetes storage if we have Radius in the future. So everything is out of the box. So we have the step-by-step uh, -step tutorial on the left. So users can uh, install it by just click on the code block and uh, the right on the right side, the online um, experimental environment will install uh, the requested gatekeeper. And it, it just take a few seconds to finish the installation. And the, similarly, you can follow the step to install uh, Ratify and install the demo pod and also the demo constraint for Ratify. You don't need to run it in your local and provision any related resources uh, in your local machine. You know, Kubernetes is not uh, everyone familiar. So uh, this environment just reduced the learning cost and, uh, pro and the infrastructure uh, cost for newbies. So we have a keeper installed. I think we can check the resources. Yeah, the keeper is running. So I think we don't need to run each step in this meeting, but I just for demonstration purposes, I just use the keeper as, as an example. But if you want to uh, dig into deep, deeper, you can just uh, copy or just keep just click on the uh, code blocker 
and it will execute on the right side in the online experiment experiment environment. I I spent the time to experience the ratifying solution, but I encountered the uh, limited resource like uh, the CPU, the insufficient CPU and the memory in this sample environment. So I'm thinking if we can uh, lower the CPU and the memory limitation for ratify Helm chart. But before that, uh, I would like to know if it is possible to add this online uh, environment for demo and first time trial to the Ratify website and Ratify Readme. I'm not sure do you, do you guys agree that this is a good uh, environment and a tutorial for newbies. Yeah, this is this is really cool. Thanks, Feynman. Uh, I think we could like link it right at the top of the quick start so they could just go to here to test it out. Yeah. Sure, I think I can uh, open an issue and PR to add this uh, scenario link. I'm not sure if Susan and others have opinions. Yeah, I see he has a suggestion. Uh, actually, I didn't have a give a try by setting the resource limit like CPU and memory limit. Uh, currently, it requires very high CPU and memory consumption for installing Runify. And uh, it, it, it exceeds the limitations of this platform, Kilacoda platform. And uh, it will return the error that insufficient CPU and memory. So I'm thinking if we can add these two uh, parameters like uh, resource limit CPU and resource limit memory to the Helm installation process. I'm not sure if there is any uh, bad impact or uh, unavailable for Ratify. I think okay. this is just for demonstration. It is not yeah. for production use. So I think it is acceptable to add the resource limitation like CPU and memory. Yeah, that's that's fine. You could probably even go lower for the memory. Uh, but yeah, the, the reason it was higher was because we started hitting some uh, some issues when we were testing with higher verification loads, which is why we changed the default up. But I think for this case, it's it should be totally, totally fine to lower it if it's just going to be the single image uh, verified. So. OK, yeah, thanks yeah, for sharing don't... this statement. Um, I think it's really cool. And just have a question on um, as we release new versions of Ratify, would this be easy to update? I think so. We just need to update the tutorial on the website, and uh, it will provision a clear, a clean, sorry, a clean environment each time when you start this tutorial. So we just update the tutorial, the text. On the left side, it's just a markdown, I think. Yeah, so when we release new versions of Ratify, do we submit the um, instruction changes on the Ratify report or the killercoder.com repository? I think we can host that uh, killercoder tutorial repo under this, this lab organization, so, so we can maintain it from our side. And oh, got it, maybe got it. We yeah, but, but yeah this as long as it's like easy when we do the release process, we don't really want to overcomplicate. Yeah, I think it should be easy as uh, other projects are also using uh, this platform to provision their first time trial resource like Gatekeeper, Opens OPA, and the Kiverno and other uh, Kubernetes support project, Nginx, Helm. Yeah. A lot of projects yeah. are using this. So yeah, I saw it looks I, like a lot of familiar names. That's very cool. Thanks for sharing. Yeah, yeah so I think um, keep it up to date with Ratify version is not a big concern, at least. OK, I will give a try by setting the uh, lower limitations for CPU and the memory and 
we try that installation. Thanks, Yi and uh, Akash and Susan. I will stop my sharing. All right, thank you, Feynman. That was pretty cool. Um, so I guess while we're on the topic, did you want to talk a little bit about the Ratify website and logo? Um, yeah, of... can you open that issue? I think we had a vote, uh, but we didn't receive too many agreement from our maintainers. Maybe I need to ping those folks in Slack channel, but most of folks are from Microsoft. So I think Bing Bing, Susan, and uh, Hardy, you can take a look at this issue. I think the next step is to migrate that Ratify website repo from the contributor's personal account to this lab. Then we can maintain it uh, in a central place. And we will also migrate and we will also move the docs, the documentation from the Ratify source code repo to the website repo and maintain it in a single uh, source place. This is the purpose of this issue. Just get, get agreement on migrating this website framework from personal account to this lab. So maybe you guys can take a look later. Yep, sounds good. Um, if uh, everyone could just sign off and take a look at this whenever you have a chance so we can push this through. Yeah, you can also give an LGTM yep. below. If we get the super majority of approval for this issue, I think we will ask Luis or the org maintainers to create a new repo, then we can migrate th those source code from uh, Sherbani to this lab. I think this is, is this a next step. Yeah, I think the next step would be to talk to the Deus lab org maintainer. I think maybe Lockheed would be helpful there. And then, because uh, when we added a new Ratify verifier plugin, um repository as well i think uh noel had added one of those we also had to go through this process so. okay so lucky would be the op maintainer to help us create new repositories under this lab i i believe so yeah thanks if we get the majority approval i will ping lucky to help us create that repo Um, some other topics, uh, Bin Bin, did you want to talk about the cert manager or should we, are you still looking into it and we can talk about it next week? Yeah, I, actually, I want to start the discussions. Yeah, so I, I, I checked the issue and I found you did some like initial investigation. I think it makes sense to use the third, uh, the third controller, uh, I mean, yes, it's one. Yeah, I think the gatekeeper is using a third rotator, which is much more like simpler than the third manager. But I just have a concern on the third renew because it always it just checks the the third validation periodically. For example, like every twelve hours. And so I'm I'm wondering if the third is like expired between two checks. So then there might be some like downtime what after this third is invalid. Yeah, that makes sense. I think um I when I was looking at this too, when I was going through the code, um 
the certs that gatekeeper generates have a expiry of like 10 years, I think. And then they're, they do like a, a look ahead. Uh, so every 12 hours they poll. And then in the polling, when they're checking if it's valid, they check the expiry date, but they check to see if the expiry date is within, I think, 90 days. I'll, I'll dig up the code again and send it to you. So I think it should be okay, but that is a that is something we need to confirm. Yeah, so so for this third rotator, it it always refresh the third. Is that right? Uh, or we can be save on that. <laughs> I, I that I don't know. I'm there might be an option to disable. I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah. I I saw there are a lot of options to set up. Yeah. Yeah, and also I checked the third manager page. It says the it, it can renew third before it's expiry, but I I haven't checked the implementation details. I just checked the third rotator. Uh, but but if the GK is using the same thing, I guess we are fine to use third rotator <laughs> to keep. Yeah, we can keep the consistent consistent behavior with gatekeeper. Sure. Yep. Sounds good. Um, any other questions on this issue? Okay. Uh, moving on. Uh, you you had also created an issue, Bin Bin, about some error handling improvements. Right. I I I create this. Up, I discussed with Xinhe. So actually, I feel we currently we have a lot of like like errors written, but there is no like customized uh customized wrapped error. So I'm thinking maybe we should like export some some errors like this. Like for example, for this API like get reference manifest, we can create an error get reference manifest error. And so then we can return this kind of error instead of just FMT dot like error, something like that. Yeah, I think that's a great idea. We can introduce like an error, error package and have some sort of standardization there. So if yeah. anyone wants to consume it, they can also easily check and based off of that. Yeah. But I think it's not blocking public preview, so it's not high priority for now. Sure. I was just adding a comment on that. And uh, Toddy and I had dis was discussing today morning. I think we want to invest heavily on diagnostics and logging. Uh, so if you want to formalize it and make a package out of it, but also make sure that every scenario is somehow debuggable, like you. It not only gives the error, but tells the user what to do. So go the extra mile of, okay, this is the error. Potentially, this is why it's happening. And look here to kind of fix it. If you can take that extra step, it would be super helpful for, uh, especially in Ratify, right? Like you're sitting behind like a bunch of layers of Gatekeeper and Kubernetes and, uh, and the CRDs. And so when you have that many levels of abstraction, the errors need to be like really helpful for them to unblock themselves. I mean, this would apply more for the open source one. I think for the hosted one, we can probably catch a bunch of them. Um, but just pay attention to uh, if you do the errors, let's follow the same pattern in the other projects as well. Yeah, Thanks for thank opening you. this issue, Binman. Cool. Um, any other thoughts on this? Um, and then I think on the same theme of like usability, uh, there was another issue that was created to add some definitions for the CRs, uh, CRDs, as well as uh, tagging off that maybe we should also add some sort of documentation for our Helm chart values. We have quite a few now, so you might need to standardize that too. Uh, I don't know who, yeah, Binbin, you had created this one too. 
Yeah, I traced a bit of the feedback from Shinka. And maybe we we have been using like Aorus annotation for a long time. So we are fam very familiar with those terms. But actually for a, a especially for a beginner or a customer, they might not have enough context on those terms. And uh, like, for example, if we have an error from Aorus and it says up, some resolving descriptor failed, so they yeah. have no idea what's going on with this error. So I think we need to like have some this definition for those common terms, and also we should have some like examples to show which term means what, and then it might might make more sense for users to debug. Yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense. Um, plus, I think a lot of our, some of the errors that users fall into are, they'll get like, oh, oh couldn't couldn't pull the descriptor, but that might have been because, oh, the auth credentials weren't set up properly. So there's some confusion as to what exactly is causing the issues too. So tying back to what you were previously talking about, the error messages too. So. Yeah, yeah, they are, yeah, they are similar. Yeah, so I think we can bundle these all together and hopefully this will be kind of a user improvement effort here. And uh, I think this was just added. I'm not sure who just added yeah, this. I, I just added this one. Okay. So yeah, it, it, it's from discussion with E and uh, for, it's not for the public review, but for J, uh, if we are still, support the key verification of cosign. Probably we also want to support like adding cosign public key through CRV, like the, for example, like the third store just for the notation. Because currently we always set up this value when we do the deployment. And if we want to update the third, I guess we can only change the config map or do a like redeployment. Yeah, that makes sense, uh, Bin Bin. I think um, this also came up last time. Like maybe we need like previous uh, sessions. I think we need a uh, key provider, like a new huh. type of CRD because currently we have the certificate store. So we need a yeah, key yeah. store. Right. Yeah, I guess it is in the scope of GA, but not. Yeah, not preview. Yeah, sounds good. Is there any way we can label this um, item? Oh, this, like... is a, this is a discussion, not an issue. I can create an issue. Oh, yes, got it, got you it. can transfer a discussion to issue. Oh. Yeah, you can see the button right at the right corner, right bottom corner, transfer discussion. Oh. Also, oh, this is transfer to different repo. Oh, sorry, just an uh, yeah. option, create issue from discussion. It will enables, enables you to transfer. Oh, that's cool. Oh, nice. Okay, cool. Cool. Uh, Susan, if you have a chance, did you want to just post also here what you were saying about the potentially new CR we might need to add? Uh, yeah, I can add the context. Thank you. Okay. Uh, and that's all that we had on the agenda. Did, does anyone have anything else they wanted to talk about? Follow up question Is there any concern to use a CA search with, with Ratify? As we are developing content for uh, notary and uh, ratify. So I'm not sure if there is any concerns or uh, potential issues if we're using CA search with Ratify. You know, users are using uh, notation to sign with a, with a CA search. So then I think in the verif verification process, we should, Ratify should be able to 
verify the images signed by a CA, signed by a CA cert. But I, I remember there's, a, there's an issue mentioned by EOS, someone else, that it is, there is a potential issue to verify with CA cert. A couple of months ago, we had an issue tracking that the user should not be able to validate with the leaf cert. Um, is, leaf cert. is that right, okay. Bin Bin? Uh, so, so what, what, what's the leaf cert? Oh. Um, we had a bug tracking that ratify should error out if the user is trying to validate using the leave certificate, but they shouldn't have a problem um, ver verifying the signature with the root certificate right now. Yes, and uh, yes, that's for notation verifier. And uh, it's a requirement from the not notation spec. Yeah, so Feynman, I, we think it's okay. It's, it works with the root certificate today. Okay, so yeah, there shouldn't be it, an issue. Yeah, we will give it a try with notation and the result with ratify. Thanks. Just a double confirm. Uh, anything else? Nothing from my side. Um, in that case, oh, subject, do you have anything? No, just just happy to see all the all the uh, usage on build and things like that. Just wanted to share that with Susan and folks who might not have had a chance to see it, but um, pretty positive. And uh, I, I think uh, Joshua's demo and things like that have been shared. So if others want to take a look, that would be really great. Yeah, thanks for sharing, Sajay. I'll take a look at the recording. Is it on the KubeCon um, like YouTube playlist? I don't know. Um, I, I, let me share the links uh, with you. Yeah, that's on Build Susan, not KubeCon. Oh, okay. That was last thanks, week. I'll look for it. Uh, Jeremy also had a KubeCon video too. Uh, we had linked in a previous. I can also send that to you. That was uh, also a Ratify demo. So. All right, if we don't have anything else, I think we can finish a bit early today. Uh, thanks everyone. I just, I just forwarded the Joshua's sharing. His link in our chat, you can check it out. Uh, sure. Feynman, if you have the document open, can we just add it? We can add it to the agenda as well so others can find it. Oh, yeah, that's a good idea. I, I will add it in the, along with the presentation, Joshua, and uh, I think the first agenda item, yep. I'll add that link. I think, I think Sajid also mentioned that we should probably have like a, like these links on our quick start or something to, or some other page so we can show people that other demos and use cases. So we can add those related ratify related videos um, to the ratify website. We should have a page to list those resources. And uh, I remember we already added uh, the video from Jeremy who presented at KubeCon EU. You so add this. What what's the I mean I don't know if folks already discussed but what is the state of the website did do we know we already discussed it in this meeting okay. actually then yeah I'm we need yeah we need to get the super majority of approval and uh, I sent the issue in our okay. chat and there's an agenda item on this meeting notes as you can okay. see yeah after we get the super majority of approval we will migrate that uh, source code from our contributors account to your data lab, and we will be able to launch that website for the next step.
All right. Thank you all for coming. Uh, see you guys next week. Thanks for, Thanks for driving, Akash. Talk to you later. I will pass it back to you next week, Susan. I, I don't, we can talk about that because next week is <laughs> in middle of the night. Is that right? <laughs> oh, sorry. The, the week after, of course, not next week for you. That's, that's going to be tough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. All right. Talk to you soon. Sounds good. Thanks. Take care. Bye. Bye bye.